What's going on guys? John Alder here from tkinter.com and in this video, we're going to look at progress bars for custom Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at progress bars for custom Kinter, but before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today, just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book, enter your email address and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com, you get all my courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at the progress bar for custom Kinter. And you can see if we click this thing, it sort of very slowly increments up or we can click start and it goes faster. We can click stop. Uh, we can continue up and it goes over again. Uh, we can have it go up and then back down again or just up and then start over again like it is here. You can see I've got this crazy color, pink, green and red. We can change the color to anything you want. It's sort of round, it's square by default. So I'll show you how to change that and all the good things. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this custom Kinter series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got a file, it's our basic custom Kinter starter code that we always use. And I'm calling it CTK underscore progress bar. And so let's come down here and let's just create our progress bar. I'm gonna call this my underscore progress bar. And this is going to be a custom tkinter dot ctk progress bar. And notice the P and the B are both capitalized in progress bar as well as the C and the T in ctk. And we want to put this in root. And for now, let's just set the orientation to horizontal. Now you don't have to put an orientation of horizontal, it's horizontal by default, horizontal means left to right. You can also have it vertical up and down. So uh, just very quickly, let's look at vertical. And then my progress bar dot pack. Let's pack this guy onto the screen, give him a pad Y of 40 or so to push it down the screen. So let's just take a quick look at that and see what we have. Let's head over to our terminal. I'm in my ctkinter.com directory. And let's run Python ctk underscore progress bar. And when we do, we get this up and down progress bar. It's already kind of half full, which is uh, not great but that's vertical up and down. So we really don't want that. I just kind of wanted to show it to you. So I'm going to change this back to horizontal or you could just leave it off. Like I said, so let's come down here and create a button. I'm going to call it my underscore button. And every time we click this button, we want the progress bar to move a little bit. So how do we do that? Well, let's call this a custom tkinter.ctk button. We want to put it in root. We want the text to equal, I don't know, click me, right? And let's give this a command of clicker. Name it anything you want, really. I'm just going to call it clicker. And then let's my underscore button dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y like 10, push down the screen a little bit. Now we can come up here and we can create our clicker function. What we want to do here is step up the progress bar one step. And we'll talk about that in just a second every time we click this button. So to do that, we call my underscore progress bar dot step. Pretty simple. Now, if we wanted to come down here and create a label to see exactly where we are in the progress, we could do that. Let's call this my underscore label. And this is going to be a custom Kinter .ctk label. We want to put it in root. We want the text to equal nothing right now. And let's give this a font of like Helvetica and like size 18 to make it nice and big. And then let's my underscore label dot pack this guy, give it a pad Y like 10, push down the screen a little bit. One more thing I want to do before we run this is let's set the default progress starting point, I guess, right? So to do that, we call my underscore progress bar dot set and then pass in a number between zero and one. So I want this to start at zero and one, think of one as 100%, zero is 0%. So let's go ahead and save this and run this guy again. And so now we see it's starting down here at the bottom. And if we hit click me a bunch of times, you can see it very slowly is increasing. We didn't update the label below here. So we're going to need to do that as well. When we get to the very end, it starts over again. And we'll talk about that in a second. So uh, before we move on, let's add this label thing. So let's update our label every time we click the button. So let's go my underscore label dot configure. And we want to set the text equal to 
my underscore progress bar dot get. We can get whatever the current position is. So if we save this and run it, and we click this, we can see it's 0 0.02, and this is a little weird, 0 0.04, 0 0.06. And you can see every once in a while, it, it splays off into decimals, right? So it's a little weird. And as I click this, it's getting closer to one, or think of it as 100%. And when we get to the top, boom, it bops back over and it starts over again. So, okay, that's kind of weird. We can play around with this number if we want. So if we come over here and we're outputting this text, we could, for instance, take all of this and then times it by 100. Because think of this as percentage, right? It said 0 0.02, but you know we might want this to be times 100. So if we did that, come back here and run this guy again, now we're going to get 2.0, 4.068, and that's a little bit better, but it's still doing this whole weird thing. Uh, it's not great. This whole progress bar, I'm going to be honest with you, is a little janky compared to the other widgets in custom Kinter. It doesn't work as well, I find, as the regular Kinter progress bar. And I'll talk about why in, in a minute. But, okay, that's not great. We can then change this to an integer if we want to get rid of all those decimals, right? We can <laughs> wrap this whole thing in an integer function. I don't know, save this, run it again. And now we're getting two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 16, 18, but it's still, it's gone wonky. Now it's at 27 because those decimals get in the way in the background, but then it fixes itself and it's back to 32. That's just a little weird, but okay, whatever. This is better. Now I should mention, if you're trying to gauge the progress of something that's not percentage based, so from zero to 100%, it, this is not a great widget for you because say you have something that needs to count down 333 seconds. You can't really do it with this. You can with the regular Kinter progress bar because you can set the length of it. You could set you know how big it is. This just defaults between zero and one. There's not really anything you can do. And we've kind of hacked around to make it look like it's between zero and 100, but it's really just zero to one, right? And we've just turned it into a percentage. But that's just sort of how this thing works. So, okay, that's interesting. What if we want to just start it and stop it, make it run nonstop? Well, we could do that as well. Let's head back over here. And let's create a couple of more buttons. And let's create a start button. And let's set that equal to a custom tkinter.ctk button. We want to put that in root. We want the text to equal start. And we want to give this a command of start, which we'll create in just a second. Let me copy this whole thing. And let's start underscore button. Dot pack this guy. Go to pad Y10, push down the screen a little bit. Now let's do the same thing again, but let's call this a stop button. And here we want this to say stop. And then the command will be also stop. And then for here, let's give this a stop button dot pack and give this a pad Y a 10, push down screen a little bit. So now we need these two functions, start and stop. So let's define our start function. And here we could just call my underscore progress bar dot start. And that will start it going, right? Likewise, we can create a stop function. And you don't have to call these start and stop. You can call them anything you want, but we're starting and stopping. So it makes sense to me to call them start and stop. And again, we could just my underscore progress bar dot stop. And that should do it. So let's save this and run it. See what craziness we've created here. So here, if we click start, it just zoop. And it just keeps going and it starts over at the beginning and just nonstop forever. If we click stop somewhere, it stopped. If we click this, our app is a little bit too small. We should change the size of that. Uh, but we could still start back up again, moving very slowly. So, okay, there's that. Now, we're moving this two at a time every time it clicks, 36, 38, you know, but we could change the step size as well. And this is also where it's a little bit wonky from a regular Kinter widget, progress bar widget. I'm gonna come up here and turn this into 350, make it a little bit bigger. So we can come down here and when we define our progress bar, let me put this on other lines because we're gonna be doing a lot of stuff here we can set the sort of speed that it goes. And speed is a bad word for this because it's not quickness, it's step size. So instead of speed, think step size, but we're calling it speed. Now I should mention these progress bars have two different modes, determinant mode and indeterminate mode. And by default, it uses determinant mode, which is what we're using now. And that means it goes up to the end and then it starts over at zero. It's of a determinant level. 
indeterminate mode means it goes up to the end and then it goes back down again, up and down, up and down versus going up to the end and then starting over. So from zero to 100, zero to 100, zero to 100, that's determinate mode. That's the default. Indeterminate is zero to 100, 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100. It goes up and down, indeterminate. So we're in determinate mode. So to change the step speed of determinate mode, we use the determinate underscore speed. So we can set this equal to, let's say 10. So let's go ahead and save this. Come back over here, run this guy again. Whoops. Deter I misspelled determinant. I'm bad at spelling. <laughs> if you haven't noticed. Determinant. There we go. I think that's right. Let's try it again. Head back over here, clear the screen, get rid of that ugly error. And now when we click click me, it goes straight up to 20. You would think it would go up to 10, but oh no, it goes up to 20 when you set the speed at 10. I don't know why. We click it again, it goes to 40, 60, 80, 100. Right now it starts back over again at 19, which is weird, but then it goes to 40. So it's really supposed to be 20. Remember those decimals are getting wonky. 60, 80, 100, 19. Okay, that's with a determinant speed of 10. You could change it to five, right? So if we did this, now it's going to be 10, right? I don't know, that's just how this works. Very weird. So if we wanted it to go one, well, that would be probably 0.5. I don't know. I don't know why. So if we run this guy, now it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and on and on and on. If we start, it goes very slowly. I should also mention when we start and stop it with a higher number. So let's change this back to say 10 and run this guy again. Now, when we click start, you can see it's very quickly. It's just boom, 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 24, 60, 800, boom, 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 very quickly. So just sort of keep that in mind, I guess. So I'm gonna change this back down to like five or something. Now we can also have an indeterminate underscore speed. And I'm gonna set that equal to five as well. I think I misspelled indeterminate. No, that's spelled correctly, but we need a comma here. We can set the mode to whatever we want. Like I said, by default, it's determinate, but if we wanted to change it to indeterminate, there we go, I think I spelled that right. Now, this won't work, but this will, the indeterminate speed will work. And now we're in indeterminate mode. So if we save this and run it, we can start out, well, right away, you can see it starts out kind of halfway through there, which is kind of weird. If we click, Click me, it goes up, 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 and then back. Down, up. See, it's sort of like going back and forth. It's not starting over. Oh, and also I should mention when we click this, it's not updating this thing here. So when you're in indeterminate mode, it's harder to get what the value is, which is also kind of weird. I don't know why it's like that. But we can also now click the start button and it just goes back and forth very quickly. If that's too quick for you guys to see, we can change this back to like, 0.5 to slow it down to make the steps smaller. And when we run this, you can see now it's very slowly because it's going one at a time, right? Zoop, zoop. It has a very satisfying motion to it, right? Down and up. Kind of very boat dock sway. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but that's indeterminate mode. So whichever you like. That works just fine. I'm gonna change this back to determinant mode, or you could just leave the mode off completely. All right, we've got start, we've got stop, we've got get, we've got step. That's pretty much all you can do programmatically with this progress bar. So like I said, this is not great. You know, in the regular t Kinter progress bar, you have a lot more options to play around with, but that, that's what this is. Now, for the rest of this video, let's talk about making this thing look different. So right off the bat, we can change the width. I'm gonna say 300 and the height. Let's give this like a height of 50, something like that. If we save this and run it, now we get this uh, much bigger thing and it's kind of rounded. I think that's because of this version of Windows that I'm on. When I'm on Windows 11, it's square by default. It's kind of weird. Let's, let's take that height and width off of here real quick. Now let's run this guy again. 
Yeah, that looks pretty square to me. Maybe that it's slightly rounded. I don't know. Hard to tell. But keep that in mind. We can change the corner underscore radius. So if we change this to like 50, it's again rounded, but it was rounded already. So that's kind of weird. Well, let's change this to 100. Let's get crazy. See what it really can do. And again, not really any change there. So Okay. I think that's just because of the, the version of Windows I'm on. I think I'm on Windows 10 on this computer. Change this to 20. Yeah, it's slightly less rounded here. If you changed it to one. Maybe that's how you make it square on this computer. Yep, there it is. Now it's totally square. So, all right, that's interesting. For now, I'm going to change this back to 20-ish. We can add a border width. So let's go border underscore width. Let's set that equal to 10. That is going to be horrifically ugly, I think. I think, I hope, <laughs> right? Yeah, not too bad. You can see there's this weird border around it. I don't know, maybe you like that. I mean, quite obviously we made it 10, but you could make it something more reasonable, like two, something like that. We came back over here and changed it. I kind of like that. It looks like a little outline. It's kind of nice. We can change the color of that border. So let's go border underscore color. And let's set that equal to red because we always try to make these as ugly as possible. <laughs> it's really just because I don't have any graphic style. There we go. And now it's red. Eh, whatever. We can change the background color of the progress bar. You can see here it's sort of dark gray right here, right? And to me, that's the background, but in, T in Custom Kinter, it is called the foreground color, right? And so let's turn this green, save this guy and run it. Now we have a green progress bar, still turns blue as it goes, but green background slash foreground. We can change the progress tab thing color. Uh, that is the progress underscore color. And so if we could change this to pink because that is a great color for this. Red, green, and pink. I can't imagine how that could go wrong. There we go. Now it's pink. Eh, whatever. So we got the border color. We got the actual progress color. We got the tabby inside thing color. Right? And uh, we can start. We can stop. We can do it incrementally. We can grab the output. Right now it's at 69, apparently. Just remember it's between zero and one. So these are always going to be in your mind. Think of them as percentages between zero and a hundred percent. We can change the height and width. We can change the corner radius and that's pretty much all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter widget quick reference guide book. This thing is awesome. Over 150 pages, with all the Kinter widget attributes. Grab your free copy today. Just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book. Enter your email address and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com. You get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for a long price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. My name is John Elder from tkinter.com and I'll see you in the next video.